Hello guys, and welcome back to Titan Quest Let's Play. We are now in Temple of Marduk. And we're gonna be exploring it fully in this episode and fighting the boss at the end. And we're already encountering some some tomb rods, which are similar to the ones kind of similar to the ones we've uh, encountered in back in Egypt, except those were green and these are blue. Alright, so if you remember in the previous episode, we've started Act 3, so uh, if you haven't seen that episode yet of the Hanging Gardens, then it's there. It was episode 50. And now we're um, in this temple, which which is straight straight there, right after the Hanging Gardens. And it's got three floors. We're right now on the first floor, and it's going to be going down, downwards, as opposed to upwards. And uh, as I mentioned in the previous episode, the boss at the end of this dungeon will be Chimera. Which is uh, not overly hard boss, but still can be challenging if you don't have the right resistances. But I'll take you through it. So don't you worry. Alright, so this was floor one. Now we're gonna... Oh, hang on. Check out this insulator ring, which we do have a better one, so we don't need it. Right, so we descend to level two first level was the smallest but they get bigger as you go down and uh, there's two ways straight away as you know is this part here is optional just got some ratmen yeah the main monster on this floor is pretty much the ratmen there's loads of ratmen on this floor on the floor above we've just been in there's been mostly tomb rods and those scavengers and down at the very bottom level there'll be some more creatures there'll be like sprites gins and spiders Pretty much. Look at that. Lazarus braces. And epic. Let's pick them up. Pretty decent. 96 armor. That's much bigger than the one we've got right now. Gives a bit of defensive ability, strength, attack speed. Yeah, this seems to be about the same. But gives us quite a lot of protection. I mean, we're losing out on fire and lightning resistance. And on. Defensive ability goes up, but defensive ability goes down. Yeah. Yeah, we do need these because 96 armor is pretty damn decent. And this, in this level, I mean, in, in Act 3, the enemies do start to do quite a bit of damage to you. So, yeah, we could sacrifice a little bit of offensive capabilities for defense. Although we're not, we're not really sacrificing much of DPS, it's just the offensive ability. But we're sacrificing it for armor and defensive ability. We could still hold on to the obsidian braces because there's a chance we might need them. And we will, because the boss at the end of this will be using fire and lightning. So we will be using obsidian braces for the boss fight. And uh, if you notice, there's lots of optional rooms here, small ones. Just go around, explore, kill every rat on the way. There's a frostbite shrine to help us. And, uh, there's quite a lot of places here, it splits out, there's another optional part around here. Alright. Tomb Rods again. Yeah, the Tomb Rods keep doing that projectile attack which causes you to slow down. I think it deals poison. Like a mild poison damage, but it slows you down as well. Which I guess for slow enemies like them, it helps them to catch up with you. I know it's quite a lot of enemies which are slow, they tend to find ways to slow you down. What's that? That's uh, one of the relics. Yen Lovang's bloodletting. That's good for the for the bleed characters, the characters who utilize bleed damage. So if you're... Usually for someone who has a rogue mastery, that's good. If you're going for the bleeding build. But otherwise, it's not gonna be that useful. Alright, so you go this way. And that is an enormous rat. That is seriously huge. Sinet Patchfur. It's one of the Ratman heroes. He's huge. I mean, look at it. If you saw this in your basement, you'd probably faint. Gladly, he's not too tough. He just looks big and scary. But, uh, yeah, he's obviously stronger than ordinary Ratman, but who knows, we could pretty much tank him. He dropped, dropped one of the monster in frequency. That's crap, not gonna have that. So that's what he dropped, Ratman's Visor. So most monsters have like, you know, the rare drops. And that's uh, one of the 
Ratman Rares. It's not that good. It gives some nice stun resistance. More, it also gives more armor, a lot more armor than what we've got. But we're gonna be losing out on tons of offensive and defensive ability. So no, probably not gonna. Although we'll keep keep hold of it because our stun resistance is pretty low right now, and it's ideal to actually get the stun resistance up as soon as possible because there will be a boss later on in this act who will be making use of stun. The infamous boss, as you all that you all probably know about, the Neanderthal Warlord. But yeah, because with that with that armor, we'll, we're losing out a lot on dexterity. If you remember the offensive and defensive abilities, but stuff like that can usually be, f you know, fixed with relics. Like if we had uh, Linez's Guile, which is a relic that drops in Act Three, then we could sort out the problem because that relic gives quite a nice bonus to dexterity. So sometimes relics can help because these monster rares, they're green, so they actually can be equipped with a relic. Or a monster charm. Alright, so now we're fighting some sprites, and they're incredibly easy. I mean, they barely even deal any damage at all. Even considering our fire resistance is not exactly high or anything. But you noticed uh, there was a Jin just now that we fought. Jins uh, can be a little bit, a little bit challenging at times, because they can cast Squall, just like the w like our one. Although their squall is not as strong as some of the other enemies can do it. Yeah, so just gonna quickly explore around here. This is like, you know, this optional rooms as well. Just pick up, loot some stuff and kill the remaining enemies. And then we'll be on our way again. We're gonna be descending to the third floor. Here we are then. Now, level 3. And this is the last of the levels before the boss. But this is quite a big, spacious level. And the spiders here, and a number of other enemies. Shenong's Dark Medicine, that's another Act 3 relic. She deals a bit of poison resist, poison damage. And it also gives uh, reduced resistances. That's usually the effect that's useful. Very useful, especially when you, when you get this relic on legendary difficulty, you'll be it it'll obviously give a higher bonus. So this is uh, like one of the good things to put on your weapon because you can uh, reduce the enemy resistances when you attack them. All right, so just I just speed through some of these parts here because it's pretty repetitive, just fighting the same enemies really. I like how this I like the design of this dungeon. It's very nice. I like how this like this like a water canal or something and we just can walk through it yeah dungeons which look different to most other dungeons in the game usually nice and this is a this is a good dungeon I like it actually I've uh, just prior to this episode I sort of briefly checked online about Temple of Marduk because I've I haven't I don't know much about it well I didn't know anything about it prior to this and uh, yeah apparently it was uh, dedicated to Babylonian god, and yeah, um, I I have a look. There's apparently some pictures as well of this temple. It actually didn't look much like um, the ha like on the outside with the hanging gardens. It actually didn't look that much like in the game, but I could be wrong. I don't like I said. I don't know anything about this. If anyone knows anything about Temple of Marduk, do let me know. Apparently, it's got another name. Like it's something like Esagila or something. Here we are, there's two djinns over there. Notice, notice that they've cast a squall as well, on exactly the same spot as we cast ours. Which can be a little bit confusing, because, because you know, they're the same color and they were cast right on the same spot. And you could be standing there and getting damaged, thinking it's your squall there, when in reality it's their one. But like I said, their squall is not overly bad. I mean, when you compare it to the scroll that the Grey Sisters do in Act 4, this is nothing. I mean, the Grey Sisters scroll is very powerful. It's even like red in color. So I'm, I'm glad actually it's different color than the one we cast, because otherwise it would have been too confusing. But we still got a while till that part. I mean, that's only in Act 4. So right, this is, uh, this is nearly the end of 2013 now. 
This is probably the last episode this year. The next episode will be done in 2014. And of course I'm hoping I'll be able to complete this Let's Play within the next year. I mean, one year is more than enough. And we're already, we're already halfway through the game. Right, we keep finding a lot of spectral matter here. Not that we need it that much, but... Any re even the relics and monster charms that you don't need, you know, in terms of stats, they could still come in handy in case you want to make an artifact, you know, and they might re request that relic as an ingredient. Okay, so this is the last room before the boss. So we're just gonna get through it quickly. This room has four traps in it. These ice, ice shot traps are a bit annoying because if the ice shots get you, they slow you down. But at least they move quite slowly as well, so you can dodge them. That was the last trap. Just loot the place. There's another spectral matter. Combine it. And we don't have any other mechanical parts. Alright. So now, off to fight the boss. But first we've got to prepare. Before we go face the Chimera, we're going to check for our gear. It's a good idea to get fire and lightning resistances against him. Even though both of those attacks can be easily dodged, I would still recommend those resistances. And see, we've put the obsidian braces back and gave us those resistances back. But uh, I think I want to put some more on lightning in case we get hit by that attack. So I decided to to equip the lightning resistance ring here. That's Yeah, that's the highest lightning resistance we have, so we'll put that. We're losing out a little bit on offensive defensive ability, but that's not too bad because we're going to change the rings back, we're gonna put the old ring back again after the boss fight. So yeah, now we've got 55% lightning resistance which is good enough and 44% fire resistance which is fine as well. So these are the two resistances you need for this boss, but like I said you can you can dodge both of those attacks. Alright, so let's go and fight the boss. We're ready to take him on. And uh, if you notice in the beginning there are traps in this room, it's quite a small room and there are traps in there, so I would recommend you to go in and destroy the nearest two traps straight away before he even comes within range and uh, once you've destroyed those traps just fight on this side of the room it's better this way and that was his lightning attack, area lightning attack now notice he's got three heads, he's got snake head, goat head and lion head and each one is actually executing each of his attacks if you notice his attacks are telegraphed really well if you notice uh, the snake head usually does fire, although it does bite as well. The lion head and the snake heads bite, but snake head when it tilts back quite a bit, you know he's gonna breathe fire. And he does that attack most frequently. And of course the goat head, goat head does a lightning attack, but he does it very rarely. See he's doing that snake head that snake head keeps breathing fire. And as soon as he lifts up the goat head, he'll do the lightning. There. You can see he sort of he sort of just stops for a moment, just crouches down for a bit, and you know he's gonna do the lightning. Oh yes, yeah, quite a predictable boss. Once you know his attack animations, you can you know kill him even without getting those resistances up. Although I'd still advise you to get them up because it's better to be safe. Oh there we go, we've beaten him. Pick up those mechanical parts and combine them. Okay, put the old ring back on, and we'll put the Lazarus braces back on as well. And, uh, yeah, destroy the remaining two traps before we loot him. But yeah, like I said, in this game, it is good to have, like, sort of, you know, backup defense as well. Like, even if you know you can dodge the boss's attacks, it's still good to have the resistances against those attacks, in if they're deadly attacks. Alright, so, we'll find the Jet of Osiris and found a, an artifact formula. Here it is, Book of Dreams. It's not too bad. It's got nice 10% damage resistance. And it's got plus one to all skills and dream mastery, so it's useful for dream. So we don't need it, really. And let's combine this Jet of Osiris, which gives us a fantastic completion bonus. That's the other one we had. This one, now just now we did, is plus 50% damage to demons. And it's, its base effect is damage to undead. So that's quite useful, actually. Going to be very handy in Act 4, where most enemies are demons and undead. So that we're going to save that up for Act 4. And here... This is for the main quest, you talk to her, and we've just leveled up. We've gotten a reward, Essence of the Domain of Dragon Kings. That's another Act 3 relic, gives a good fire resistance. 
Okay, so we're just gonna come out into the village here, we'll tag the portal and the rebuild fountain before we level up. Alright, let's level up. So we've got... We're almost close to the top tier of defense, so I'm going to put two points in that. So at the next level up, we'll be able to get to the top and get those skills. And the last point I'll put into Squall. So yeah, and for the attributes, we should keep putting points in strength. So one in strength, and our intelligence is lagging behind, so we'll put nothing in intelligence. That's it. We're on level 28 now. And uh, we'll stop around here. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.